The aim of this short presentation is to introduce a project which sought to integrate digital film technology into teaching within the School of City and Regional Planning. As part of a larger teaching innovation award from Cardiff University, the project sought to improve the student learning experience by integrating digital film technology into teaching, learning and assessment. Digital film technology was introduced in two ways. Through teaching-led film production, i.e. Uh, films made by staff, and through assessment-led film production, in other words, films made by students. This integration had the overall aim of enhancing the student learning experience in the following ways. Through improving the learning experience by giving students new skills, to facilitate their ability to critique and engage with the world around them, and learning skills of film creation, film editing and media dissemination. Teaching geography by employing student-led film prompts individuals not simply to make movies, but acquire skills of direct observation. Through this process, students can not only become cognizant of the ways in which ideas ground themselves on the landscape, but also challenges them to call into question the dominant perspectives and voices that make that landscape. The production and employment of film in teaching thus enhances student learning through the explicit positioning of themselves and their work in the real world. It enables them to recognise and critique issues associated with representation and the authorial voice, as well as making explicit, transparent and accountable their own positioning within their work. In order to realise this project, students were set the task of making a short film or audio slideshow as part of their qualitative methods module. This qualitative methods module involved the research not only exploring respondents' perceptions and interpretations of the world, but also explicitly positioned themselves as active interpreters of their world. The assessment required students to employ a range of qualitative methods, including ethnography, autoethnography, interviews, recorded images, pictures and sound, to portray their interpretation of the place they live in, the place of Cardiff. In other words, following Cohen Smith, the assessment required them to be a tour guide for their city and use a range of mo uh, mobile qualitative methodologies in order to enhance their knowledge of their city. Theoretically, this mobile tour was informed by the psychogeographical tradition. As Pinder states, psychogeography involves a variety of explorations not only to the physical landscape of the city, but also the psychological landscape of the city. And by using mobile methods by walking through the city. It is seen that students can get a more physiological alongside the physical and psychological understanding of the world around them. In groups of three, students were asked to drift across the city and inform their drift through one of the following questions. When undertaking the drift, they had to undertake a number of exercises. They had to record their drift using audio recordings, taking photos, making films about the landscape they're walking through. They then had to reflect on their experiences through a focus group discussion and use these materials in order to set up a storyboard for their drift that they then made into an audio slideshow. In terms of assessment, students were assessed on the following criteria. Was their drift clearly introduced? Is the drift and their argument clearly presented and sequenced? Did they use a range of qualitative methods? And is the final audio slideshow watchable? and insightful. The outputs for these project, projects was overwhelmingly successful. The project enabled students with different learning and communication skills to diversify their skill set and allow them to excel in different media. It empowered students to continue the ownership of their own learning by making these independent film essays and audio slideshows. It also emboldened them to take up the role of producers rather than the passive recipients of knowledge. Students took pride and enjoyment in creating these films, as module evaluation comments stated. They enjoyed the diversity in assessment method that introducing audio slideshows produced. The new form of assessment introduced them to new skills, which was useful for other forms of assessment, but also in their placement year and future employment. And of course, using film coursework as they state, made me look at the cityscapes in ways I hadn't previously. If you'd like to know more about the use of digital film technology as uh, advanced by this project, the student presentations that were produced can be found on www.spatialmanifesto.com. Thank you.
popular strip in Butown, which is situated in Cardiff, South Wales, and is in close proximity to the famous Cardiff Bay. We hope to show in this presentation where the boundaries of Butetown lie in respect to the rapidly developing adjacent areas such as Cardiff Bay and the city centre, and asking the question of has the evolution of Cardiff over the last two centuries left distinct boundaries in the Butetown area? To understand this in more detail, it is important to realise the heritage of Cardiff and what the Lord Butetown did in the house. The key milestone occurred at the end of the 18th century, in 1794, when the Glamorgan Canal was completed in Cardiff and Merton together, and establishing Cardiff as a worldwide exported for the Until the late 1800s, Butetown was a far and more land, until a certain maps of Butetown decided to build the first dock in Cardiff. Following the opening of West Bay Dock in 1839, John Cookson's figure became a third master, continuing his father's dream to make a boot on a respectable middle class of the The houses mainly officer were sea captains and merchants. Unfortunately, during the decline of the coal exports in the late 1930s, Butan, which now had an unsustainable population, began to suffer from the effects of mass unemployment. As a result, the wealthier of its inhabitants moved to the more respectable suburbs of Cardiff, and in their place arose the first multi-ethnic community formed by people from all over the world, commonly known as Tiger Bay. As Sinclair explains, walking is the best way to explore and exploit the city. Therefore, we walked through the Butan area, going into the heart of the neighbourhood and along what felt like natural boundaries of the area. In doing so, we were trying to gain a better understanding of what the differences were in the adjacent region and distinguish where the boundaries of Butetown seem to start and finish. We begin our journey at Cardiff Bay train station, located at the edge of Butetown. The movement of cars shows that the area is used more as a thoroughfare than as a place to stop, highlighted by the number 7 bus, which is destined for Cardiff Bay. Yet, there is a feeling of reluctance to stop in the area. Hemingway Road seems to give an initial idea of being the edge of a boundary that divides Butte Street through a set of traffic lines. They unintentionally act as a physical stopping point, highlighting the end of Butte Town and the beginning of Cardiff Bay development. A stone wall runs adjacent to the railway line, acting very much as a physical barrier. Subsequently, the area feels enclosed and hemmed in, almost claustrophobic at this point, yet there is a tree line that attempts to soften the immediate feeling of the boundary. There are specific bays for parking on the edge of Butte Street that allow the continual fluidity of cars through Butte Town to be done showing Butte Street's role as more of a thoroughfare and access road to Cardiff Bay and the city, rather than a stopping point for Butte Town. This presents a clear boundary in the south, that is highlighted through the presence of bus stop in Butte Town that gives residents a small feeling of inclusion into society. Heading north along Butte Street, there are great boundaries and divisions of the use of land. For example, on the left-hand side, there is a plot that one can only describe as no man's land, which is untended, wild, and looked over from both sides, yet unclaimed. The feeling of being hemmed in really hits home with the tops of the chic estates surrounding, popping over and looking down, almost like that of a king above and the people below. As we venture deeper into Butetown, we start to see the great diversity this area is famous for. It was previously known as Tiger Bay because of its multicultural society at the outbreak of World War I, and such presence is still visible today. With a population of 4,487 from the 2001 census data, there were 18.81% black or mixed people, 9.46% Asian, and 4.1% Chinese. This multicultural and accepted society is reflected in the buildings we see, such as a mosque just off Butte Street, illustrating acceptance and lack of boundaries within Butte Town. Upon the boards and divisions of development, the residents have expressed their emotion through the use of graffiti. Reminding people of the history of the area, the coal miners, pirates, monks, and fishermen from the maritime past, showing a clear division and boundary of historic and modernistic development. Langdon Square, at the centre of Butte Street, illustrates there is a lack of large commercial chains such as Co op and MLS Company. Instead, privately owned businesses run for and by members of the community, which shows a sense of belonging and cohesion, supported through the introduction of a new Yemeni news centre advertising on the shop windows. Yet such clear differences of community spirit evoke a feeling of dissimilarity and ultimately boundaries to the shopping centres such as St David's and Cardiff Bay, just half a mile away. We asked a local resident if he feels sidelined from the new developments which are rising up around the surrounding areas of Butte Town. He replied, They've been building all around us, and I get the impression we are stuck here like an eyesore in the landscape. 
Ultimately, I feel like the boundaries seem to be closing in on this area, creating a clear-cut divisions between surrounding communities. Within Butan, it is quite clear that there are divisions. The newer housing which has popped up is very different to the older high-rise which was evolved. We pass a clear boundary within the estate, Angelina Street, which gives the impression of breaking apart two sides. One would have something that could almost be that of a businessman in an estate on the suburbs, on the other, with dark, dingy and small terraced houses. 